All right, the season is done, and we've played a, a heck of a season. And I guess the big question now is, is who's going to get those trophies? Who's going who's to be awarded the best team, the second place team, the third place team, and so on and so forth? And this is, again, another thing that becomes somewhat difficult. How do you figure out which team has played the best? Um, and it turns out that there's a systematic way to do that, and a lot of it involves mathematics. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our win average, um, and that, or our win percentage. Basically, how many times do we win compared to how many times do we play? And if we tied, how do we count those ties and things like that? And what happens if after we do this, we have two or three teams that tie with the same win percentage? And so we're going to talk about some mathematics involved in figuring out how to rank the teams, first, second, third, all the way down to the last team, um, and how does mathematics get worked into that? So I think my team bid pretty well, and the question is, is, is it actually comparable to other teams? Did we do even better than other teams? And so let's talk about how we can use mathematics to figure out how to rank the teams. Okay, so what we want to talk about now is after the season is completely done, um, we're going to have some wins and losses for each of the teams. And uh, in that case, how do we figure out uh, the ranking? And what I'm going to talk about is two things. I'm going to talk about the winning percentage, and I'm going to talk about the head-to-head um, -head winning percentage in case th there's a tie. So the idea here is, first of all, is there a nice way to represent um, the season as far as like how, how the teams have done? And it turns out, using graph theory, there is. And this brings us to what's called a directed graph. A directed graph is where we make the edges have directions. We make arrows out of the edges. So for example, suppose that I have a team, say it's team A, and I have another team, team B. And remember, we represent these teams with vertices, which allows us to kind of see the team, team D and team E. Now, in this case, it may or may not be a round robin, right? Um, but if it is a round robin, okay, that's fine. So the idea is that each of the teams would have played each other. So let's make this one a round robin. So each of the edges corresponds to a game that was played. So we have all these games. And we're not worried about the scheduling right now, so we don't have to see those subgraphs. We just want to see the graph in general. And so we have something that looks like this. Now, how do we make it so that we know which team won? Uh, for each of these games. Well, we can make it a directed graph. And the way that we make it a directed graph is we give the edge a direction. And the most obvious choice then is to give the direction towards the winning team. So maybe when A played B, then um, I'll, I'll give that direction right there, B won. And maybe when B played C, B also won that one. And in fact, maybe when B played D, B won that one, B's doing a great job. Um, but when B played E, E won. Okay. Maybe when A played E, E won. Maybe when um, E played C, uh, E won. But when E played D, D won. And maybe when A played D, D won. And maybe when uh, D played C, C won. So we see that each of the edges has a direction, and we can see uh, whether team A or B or C, whoever won, we can actually see who won. Now that means from this, I can look at the number of wins versus losses. So A had, A had, well, A, oh, we don't know about A and C. Let's say that A won that one. So A had one win against C and three losses against the other teams. So it's one win to three losses. So A won one out of four or 25% of their games. What about B? B had one, two, three wins and one loss. So it, the team B won three out of four of their games or 75%. And I can find these percentages by simply dividing. One divided by four gives me 0.25. And if I turn that into percentage, I move the decimal place over two spots, and that makes it 25%. And same thing with B. 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.75. 0 0.75 turns into 75%. What about C? Well, C won against D, but lost against all the other teams. So it's 1 to 3. Um, and so they won 1 out of 4 of their games, 25%. And D, what about D? D won 
the only game that they won was against A. That's the arrow that's pointed towards them. Or no, wait, A and E. So two out of uh, two out of four. They won two and lost two. So two out of four was their how much they won. Fifty percent of their games were won. And E, E won against A, against B, against C, but lost against D. So three, three and one. So three out of four, or seventy-five percent. This is pretty neat because what it does is it allows us to see. It allows us to see that B and C had the highest percentage of wins, and then D, and then A and C tied for the lowest percentage of wins. So is there a way for me to use this to actually figure out the ordering? Well, it turns out, yes, there is. And the way that I do it is this is called the winning percentage. I give the highest winning percentage the highest ranking. Now, in this particular case, I've got some ties, right? So I've got a tie between B and C for the highest. And so what I'm going to do is since they're the two that tied, sorry, B and E, I want to put a line right there so I can see. Okay. So B had 75% of the wins and E had 75% of the wins. Now notice that between B and E, they did play a game and that game was right here. And in that game, E won 100% of the games between B and E. So because of that, we're going to say that E did better than B. So E had the highest winning percentage, then it had the highest, what we call the head-to-head -head winning percentage. And the head-to-head -head winning percentage is when we look at the teams that tied, and we look at their winning percentages amongst the games that they played. And in this case, it's only E and B, and E and B played one game together. So E had the highest winning percentage, uh, tied with B, but between E and B, E had the higher of the head-to-head -head winning percentages. Now the next up is the 50%, which is D. And then A and C tied. So we look at their head-to-head. -head. A played against C and A won. So A was next and then C. So in this particular example, when we look at the way to rank these, we start out by looking at the winning percentage. And I guess we can use graph theory to see it really quickly. And then if we have a tie, we look at the head-to-head -head winning percentage and see how, how that goes. Okay, so now I want to do another example where we might have a head to head that's a little bit more uh, intense. And so, for example, suppose that I have a team A, a team B, a team C, team D, team E, and team F. Okay, and let's give that some directions. So let's say that A plays B and B wins. F plays B and B wins. E plays B and B wins, right? B plays D and D wins, B plays C and C wins. Okay, so now B's got three wins. Now suppose in addition, A has three wins. So F plays A and A wins, E plays A and A wins, D plays A and A wins. So A's got three wins, and then let's give a loss to A when A plays C. Okay, so A loses to C. Now let's suppose also that C has three wins. So C plays D and wins, but then loses to E and loses to F. Um, and then let's suppose that uh, we look at, let's say that um, E loses to D and D loses to F. And um, F loses to E. And I think that gives us everything we need. So let's compute those winning percentages. So when I look at A, A had three out of five. So three out of five for the winning percentage, which would be 60%. Now when I look at B, B won three out of five. So three out of five, again, 60%. And we did this on purpose to get a tie, A, B. What about when we look at C? C again had three out of five, so that's 50, 60%. What about D? Now, D won two out of five, so that's 40%. And E? E won two out of five, so that's 40%. And F? F won two out of five, so that's 40%. Now, the reason I wanted to look at this one is because I want to look at that head-to-head -head again. So I'm going to break it down for A, B, and C, which tied at 60%. 
so they're tied for like those first three spots when we're doing the rankings. But when we do the head to head, we're actually going to look at all three of the teams, A, B, and C. And we're really going to only focus on the subgraph that contains those vertices. So we've got the edge right here, A to B. We've got the edge right here, A to C. We've got the edge right here, B to C. And we've got the edge, is there anything else? No, those are all the edges. In this subgraph, we see that A had a losing percentage of 100%. In other words, its winning percentage in this subgraph is 0%. A won zero out of the two games played in this subgraph. So when we're doing the head-to-head, -head, we look at the teams that are tied. And since there are three teams tied, we look at all three teams and all the games that they played to each, against each other. B won one, C, C won one between those two. So B won 50% uh, of their games. And C won both games against A and B. So C won 100%. So in the winning percentages, they tied, but in the head-to-head -head winning percentages, when we just look at those three teams, it goes C, and then B, and then A, All right? So the rankings would actually go like that. Now, if I want to do the same type of thing for the head-to-head -head for the other three teams that tied, so that'd be D, E, and F, so here's D, here's E, and here's F, I want to only focus on those, then I got the D to F, I've got the E to E and F, and I've got the E and D. Now, if you look at this particular one, they all won 50%. So when I rank these, E is going to be the same thing as F is going to be the same thing as D in my ranking. Now, it turns out that there are more ways to break down the rankings for this and to, to actually break these ties. Um, there's like the run to total run totals, head-to-head -head total run differentials, and things like that if it's baseball or, or another sport that has points like that. Um, but I only want to focus this far. So if we have a tie, we can leave it at a tie right here. Of course, if you're really interested in this, it'd be a great project to go beyond and say, okay, what do you do if you get this far and you have to try to break a tie again? And what are the different ways to break ties? And there's actually quite a list of them if you, if you look it up, depending on the sport that you're looking at. But another cool way that graph theory comes into play when you're talking about trying to figure out sports. And in this, in this case, we're talking about rankings.